been two days and I've been messing around with this thing and I'm really enjoying it. And first things first, I'm using it on batteries and um, you can see it takes six double A's and these are you know, the rechargeable ones which I prefer to use, um, the any loop ones. I mean, it's no problem for me because I'm not gonna really run out of these things. I've got a lot because I use a lot of double A's and I've got, you know, an eight cell charger. So let's turn this on. Okay, so the first thing I felt when I opened this thing out and switched it on was, you know, uh, what do I do? <laughs> it's just like, there's all this stuff here because I have no experience or knowledge with synthesizers and how they work and, and things like this. So it's been, these past two days have, have been such a learning curve for me. And um, okay, so before I actually begin anything, I want to kind of explain a little bit about the, you know, how a synthesizer works. Uh, because I want to get it in my head too. This is me, this is actually me learning. But, okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone knows more about this because to be honest I'm a novice when it comes to how synthesizers and things like this work. Okay so we have attack, we have decay, sustain and release. And thanks to a friend of mine who you know explained this in a nutshell and also messing around with the DX I'm starting to get the hang of this well at least I hope I'm starting to understand this a bit more. Um, so this is from my understanding I'm trying to keep it clear if I'm wrong do correct me. The attack is how a sound begins. You know, if it begins abruptly, like a pluck sound, or if it begin, begins smoothly, like a strings sound. So if it begins smoothly, you have, the attack kind of looks like that. If it um, begins as a pluck or something, it just goes straight up there and, you know, it starts. So the decay is when, it's, when the sound then starts to subside, so you can control the amount of decay the sound has. If you wanted it to get a lot, it goes you know down like this. That'll be and if you cause it to decay a lot, it'll be like a pluck on a string. Um, if you make it decay smoother, it'd be like more of like how a piano goes down. Sustain is how long it lasts, how long the sound lasts. Finally release is the letting go of the sound. So it's how it fades out. If you want it not to fade out, if you want it to kind of like, you know, go completely go abruptly, it just like this. So you can control these variables when you're synthesizing. I hope I got this right. <laughs> this is actually for my getting it clear in my head so I know what I'm doing more than teaching you like what it is. So, okay, so what I will do first thing is connect this reface into your ears. <laughs> okay, let's go through a few of the sounds that, that you have in this. Um, like a DG chord. Down a bit for the next one because I know it's loud. So it's like. I mean, it's cool, but it's not my kind of sound. I mean, it's like more of a dubstep kind of, and I'm not into dubstep whatsoever. So, <laughs> um, there's some which are not so useful to me. And you have these pad sounds, which are nice. I like these. Bass sounds here. Kind of cool. Can use that. You will recognize a lot of these sounds from the 80s tracks because a lot of 80s, a lot of the musicians are from the 80s used um, the DX7, which this is obviously a reface of. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this thing, uh, this sound here. and show you exactly how I do it. So we go into the edit function here and um, most of this by the way is messing around. I haven't checked the instruction manual that much though I do not recommend I do recommend you check it but my way is just messing around with stuff and very minimal if it's something that's really getting me then I will check the instruction manual. Okay so you have algo which is algorithm but I'm not calling it algo <laughs> and you have um, freq frequency in other words. I haven't grasped the concept of it yet, the algorithms, so I need to kind of do that. This is the level of each algorithm, so let's kind of change these and see what... I love the control on this by the way. Okay, let's just take all these four others out. 
Okay, I forgot to mention that this entire thing here is called a an envelope. Because I was just about to use that word and I remembered that I forgot. <laughs> this is something which I didn't, you know, you know, on the um, any other reviews that I watched, uh, I didn't see this mentioned anywhere. When you actually program your own sound. There is, you know, you want to save it and you want to store it. There is no no other place to store it unless it's replacing one of the, the presets in the bank. So I can replace this ambi plug, ambi plug, sorry. I guess I'm thankful that, you know, there's sounds like this stupid thing which I can replace <laughs> because I'm never going to use that. But, you know, you can always recall it if you, you know, want the original back. However, it will delete yours, the one that you've done. So it's kind of, can you see what I mean? It's a little bit, mm -mm. Okay, so let's try and like create a sound from start. Let's go to this nasty one. And if you press um, function, you got, okay, every time you press function, it's going into a separate menu. Like, can you see those four dots? The second one is full. So this, this is for the MIDI. If you click it again, it goes onto the third dot. If you click it again, the fourth dot, and what you want, if you want to start from fresh, is an initial voice. Okay, so this is just a basic clean sound, a clean slate, blank canvas. You can start messing with this. So let's change the, um, I don't know what we changed. <laughs> let's kind of, another frick. Okay, I don't know what this FB is, I forgot what it means. It's definitely not going to be Facebook. <laughs> so let's just kind of check what the freak FB is. By the way, the instruction manual is for all four of the series, the Reface series, the C. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So FB does not stand for Facebook, it stands for feedback. <laughs> so let's kind of give it some feedback. Okay, so the thing which I was throwing earlier on, the um, envelope, the attack, decay, sustain, release, and this thing, you will see this in action now over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and make a plucky kind of sound. So this changes the attack, this changes the decay, sustain, and release. So the attack, you can make it, can you see? You can make it smooth, so it's it starts smoother. I'm gonna make a pluck sound, so I'm gonna start it. I want it to start quite abruptly, but we need to lower this the level of the decay. It's, this is changing the length of the decay, how long it is, and stuff. This is the rate. If you change it to level, it changes the the level, the volume level of the so the decay. You can see it there. Let's change the level to this as well. The sustain. So that's how the sound is shaped right now, because of the way the envelope is. So let's go back to red. And we have, let's make the decay short. So it that sounds like a pluck. Now the release, now if you just do that, it's got no release. It just abruptly stops. As you can see there. However, if you give it a bit of a release, you can see it starts to... Okay, so now let's... Let's do what? What do we do? <laughs> let's kind of... Uh, okay, I get this now. If you click on the... Let's say, for example, you want to change the rate. And you can see each of these four screens. When you click on the red again, it changes um, for the second algorithm, number two. So making the attack release and everything for the second, in number two in the algorithm, in the algo thing. So it's kind of a layered, you know, you're making layers of it, different layers of the sound now. So it's it takes some time to mess around with it. But this is how you kind of program your own presets, which is kind of cool. Okay, so when you click this Facebook <laughs> feedback, um, you can change it to a sawtooth. 
the first algorithm. Or a square wave. And the second one. Okay, LFO, I don't know what it stands for, but I know what it does. It does like a modulation. So if you want to kind of make it sway a bit, you put the pomade up a bit. You can hear that now. But you don't want to do it too much, so you do it slightly. And you can you can control the speed, which is, you know, and slower. Is like slow. The delay is basically this when the when the modulation starts. So if you want it to start a bit late, so it it has a clean sound and then it starts kind of doing that. Now let's if we change the we've messed around with this now. If we change the algorithm, maybe a bit different. No. Okay, that changed it slightly. Okay, so what you can do is you can also add effects to this. Like this is just going straight through. So you can choose to kind of so you can choose to kind of like use a distortion effect and add like a drive. Sorry. But I don't want that, so <laughs> let's change. Add a wah and how sensitive it is. Chorus, which that is too strong, so let's kind of just gives it a bit of a depth. Let's keep that one. So if you can, I do effect one, and if you do effect again, click on it again, it goes to a second effect. So you can layer two effects on top of each other. So you can add a flange. I'm not exactly fully sure what the difference between a flange and a phaser is. They sound very similar to me. But okay, yeah, I know the difference now. There is a difference in sound. From a delay. There's so much more things you can do with this. You know, I've just gone, I've just like touched on it. And something which I wanted to know, you know, as a novice with regards to MIDI and synthesizers, uh, I really wanted to know this. If you can connect, you know, a MIDI controller to this. Because at the back we have the MIDI port which we connect, you know, it's like a mini DIN. And you connect this, which splits it into the large, the usual, you know, DIN MIDI, 5-pin DIN MIDIs. Anyway, which plugs into this and it's labeled on the MIDI out and MIDI in. And the actual wires themselves, the cables themselves, I should say. Um, so I have a MIDI cable here, just a standard 5-pin DIN to 5-pin DIN. So what we need to do is we need data to go in here. So we connect it to the MIDI in on this. Okay, so we that down. Now this thing is, it's got no sounds of its own, it's just a keyboard, it's just a controller. Okay, so this thing also needs external power. So what I tend to do is, I mean, it does not come supplied with, you know, the, the, the 9 volt DC. However, if I'm using it with MIDI only, I tend to power it with USB. Okay, firstly, let's store that sound that we made. Uh, just because something happens, because if this switches off, then that sound is gone. <clears throat> so we press the store button, and the bank 48, let's check that. It's that stupid chopper, that weird, you know, chainsaw kind of sound, so yeah. So let's name it, and... <laughs> this is gonna take a while. Okay, and <clears throat> all you do is press store on here, and it's done. So this now gives the DX a larger keyboard with full-size velocity-sensitive keys. I mean, this is velocity-sensitive anyway. 
We don't make this for those reasons. So why is this not? Hmm. Okay, I just realized now that I've done something a little stupid. Let's connect you back to the ears. <laughs> I was messing around with the algos and wondering, you know, why isn't anything working? Why isn't it, you know, making a difference? And I realized that the levels were down on the other parts of the algorithm. Duh. So I just kind of... I was wondering what the algo, algo is not making any difference. Now can you see that? It's got more depth. And you can change, go to the Facebook button, the feedback button. So you can make the first one like that, the second one. <clears throat> Let's change the algorithm. starting to get this. How do I make my sound velocity sensitive? This is one thing I don't get. Um, okay, so if we go into um, the function options, uh, oh, that's how you can recall the voice again. Okay, factory reset recalls all other voices and deletes yours, puts it back to everything. Voice recall is just that single voice that you're on. Voice in it is the voice that you're on, or you know, it just makes a new one. Okay, I want to change the velocity sense of I'm looking for that and I'm finding the rest of them. It is Maddie from the future. Well, I was messing because I was messing around with this after making this video, and uh, yes, I was struggling finding the velocity. And um, you know, I've figured out what these four buttons at the top are when they're in edit mode, when it's in edit mode, this entire thing. So I'm gonna just fill in a little bit the algo. Uh, that is, these are called operators. Um, and each one you can set, like for example, you go into edit mode, then you go into, you know, level or the rate or something like this. And as you can see, there's four dots, one, two, three, four. Well, you know, I don't need to count them for you. <laughs> you can count. But um, yeah, what was I saying? So uh, you need to kind of, if you go into, you click it again, it goes into the second operator, as you can see, number two. Now that you can adjust you know, the levels, or if you're in the red or something like this, or LAFO, um, you can, you know, adjust that. For each operator, you can do that. Like, if you press this again, the third operator. Okay, so the fourth operator, you have this, and there's no smooth operator. <laughs> okay, that's bad. Those of you who know Shade, <laughs> I'll carry on. Um, so you have those four operators, which, you know, when you go into algo, it it shows the arrangement of them. I'm kind of starting to know what it is, but not fully. Still need to mess around with this thing. Right, okay, so velocity. What you have to do is go into Maddie voice here, yeah? and these four are the operators. Uh, you have to do so edit, and if you go into operator one, and go into the second Press it again, vel s, which means uh, velocity sensitivity. So what you need to do is just increase that so it's, as you can see there. For each operator, you can adjust the velocity, different velocity, I think. Let's check. Yes, you can. For each operator, it's a different velocity, so... That's kind of cool because, you know, you can get a different effect if you... I don't know what this cuskr is, but I'm sure I'll find out and start running back here. keys here. <laughs> the last video was the unboxing and then it's two days and I made this video. And um, I've managed to find my way around it. This, this, I love this interface. So yeah, I will let you go back to the past. <laughs> no, actually not the past, the present moment. I'm sure there is a way of doing it, it's just that I don't freaking know. 
One thing cool about this is that, do you know when I had to set the LFO, the, the modulation, you know, I had to set that, um, you know, with that. Over here, it has a modulation dial. Like here, you got the pitch bend. But next, you got the modulation, so it's... So you can kind of like read it slightly. Something more so. Okay, so in order to turn loopy on, <laughs> what you need to do is go into the looper, which records a piece of what you've done, and then plays it back so you can you know play on top of that. So let's say for example, I'm gonna record a chord of something or you know the background music or bass line or something like this, and I wanna record that. Let's set the tempo down. There's a guide here as well. You can choose to have that or not. Like it's like it's basically a metronome. And um, yeah, so what I need, all I need to do now is just start recording, and it'll start blinking, and I can start. It will start recording as soon as I start playing, which is the cool thing about this. So there's no pressure in this sense, <laughs> and you can stop it, you know, just as you finish. <laughs> Tempo significantly, significantly higher um, because I cannot play this, this piece that fast. <laughs> but I need it that fast. And do excuse my inaccurate playing. I haven't played for years and I need practice. Okay, that's fine. So it's, that's basically how you can loop. And let's try and record um, onto that and see what else I can do. I, mean, I don't know any other part of the song, but let's see if we can. I cannot change the, um, you know, if I change the instrument, it will just change the instrument of the one in the background playing. So I cannot do two different instruments. As in, do one instrument and loop another on top. conclusion about the DX, well, I love it. <laughs> I only have two issues, however. The looper being bound to the current selected preset or instrument and not being able to use more than one, and also it not having a user bank for sounds. And having to write over the presets, um, you know, it'd be good to have your own bank, a custom bank. Besides this, I love the synthesizer and how user-friendly the interface of the DX Reface is. Uh, it's pretty intuitive, and even for somebody like myself who, you know, has absolutely no previous knowledge of synthesizers, I actually learned how to use how a synthesizer works and and kind of how to use one through the because of the DX. You know, I'm really happy about that. And not to mention, I'm happy about being able to connect a MIDI controller to it, even though, you know, that's just how a standard MIDI works. Uh, I love how portable this thing is. It's light yet robust and just the perfect size, you know, and how I can, how I can connect it to my Amiga and make music with it using Soundtrack Pro and others. Unfortunately, there's no option to send MIDI out from Soundtrack Pro. You know, I just discovered this just the other day. The creator didn't get around to that, unfortunately, but I'm happy with what I have. <laughs> 